Later in this tutorial, we'll use a collection of sample text included in the supplementary materials section. If you'd like to practice along with the tutorial, open the file called APA in-text practice now. In the past two tutorials, we worked on creating a reference page and formatting some sample source entries. In this tutorial, we'll look at the last piece in the puzzle, the in-text citation. You've done a lot of research while writing your paper and you've developed your research page list summarizing all that hard work. In-text citations are the way you say to the reader, hey, I did a lot of research, you should really listen to my ideas. Or on a more practical level for students, there are little arrows directing your teacher to all your hard work and demanding credit for it. Think about it this way. You wouldn't spend hours completing math problems and then neglect to turn your work in. So you shouldn't spend hours researching an assignment and then leave out all the in-text citations so that your teacher doesn't see where you used that research. And while I don't like to emphasize the plagiarism issue because I think student writers should focus on why citation helps you rather than on getting into trouble, I do need to touch on the reality that most schools have some kind of academic integrity or honor code that bans plagiarism, which is the use of external source material without proper credit. Proper citation, including the use of in-text citations, is crucial to avoid charges of academic dishonesty. The basic guideline for citation is that you must cite material that is neither your original idea nor common knowledge. If you use the wording from the source, you must also place the quoted material in quotation marks. However, whether the material is quoted or paraphrased, you must insert an in-text citation. Students often ask how often they have to insert in-text citations, and the answer is that any time you come back to source material after having moved away from it, either to offer original analysis or to include material from another source, you need to insert an in-text citation after the referenced material. If you find that you drop a citation at the end of the paragraph to cover the entire paragraph, you either aren't citing properly or you're relying too heavily on one source because you should never have an entire paragraph that has no original analysis and only draws from one source. We're going to work on a sample document that has some text in it, so go to the sample file I mentioned at the start of the tutorial now. The normal pattern for an in-text citation in APA formatting is the author's name, comma, and the year of publication, with everything enclosed in parentheses. If more than one author is needed, separate them with commas between the authors and an ampersand before the last name. If you have only two authors, you can omit the comma. I've used all three sources from our practice document in this article, and I used my first source in the second sentence. The citation goes at the end of the sentence, clause, or phrase where the source was used, before the comma or period. I'm going to place my citation right after the word evidence. Parenthesis, Steckel, ampersand, Prince, comma, 2007, parenthesis. My next citation goes at the end of the third sentence, after the word nation. This citation is the one that students often mistakenly omit because the next citation is going to be from the same source. The general rule is that you should err on the side of oversighting if there's any concern that the reader might not recognize all the cited material. In this case, my next citation is a direct quote, so I'm not confident that a reader would realize that the citation after the quote also applies to the paraphrased material. Parenthesis, Hill, comma, 2007, parenthesis. The next citation goes after the quote. When citing quoted material, you move the final punctuation out of the quote to after the citation. You also need to add a page number after the year of publication. So as a first step, delete the period after history. Now in this case, I already mentioned the author's name and we can omit any information that is already mentioned in the sentence. So all I need are the year and the page number. Parenthesis, 2007, comma, P, period, 192, parenthesis, period. Our last citation comes in the final sentence of the paragraph. I'm citing the video, and the guideline is to use the real name unless there isn't one, in which case you substitute the username. So for this citation, it's parenthesis, curmudgeon66, comma, 2013, parenthesis. And that's it. 
Now we have a paragraph with four citations from three sources. You may want to keep this practice paragraph available until you get used to in-text citations. There aren't too many variations, though, so you'll likely get the hang of them quickly with practice. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial.